Charles Davis uh, joining us from somewhere on a remote island. I guess it's not so remote. There's a building behind him. Somewhere on the Atlantic. Charles, Chargers did a lot this offseason, especially on defense. What was their best move, in your opinion? Well, first of all, Chris, I don't have to hold up a newspaper with the date and everything, right? I'm good, right? Good. Yeah. This is the type of hostage situation. Yeah, this is what you want. Fire to. This is what we're looking <laughs> forward to. Listen, to me, their best addition in this past offseason – was obviously getting Khalil Mack because Joey Bosa is a perennial pro bowler at one defensive end. When, when has he been at his best? When he had a tag team partner by the name of Melvin Ingram. And now to get Khalil Mack, who feels like he's got something to prove because he's coming up with a foot injury and didn't play much of last season, you get those two back together, look out. And by the way, AFC quarterback, AFC West is quarterback central. You've got to not only stop the passes downfield, you've got to hunt quarterbacks. Khalil Mack allows them to do that. You've got to go get Russell Wilson. You've got to go get Patrick Mahomes. You've got to go get Derek Carr. And that's what they're able to do. And an underrated move for them is getting Kyle Van Noy coming from New England because that team was so close to the playoffs last year. He knows how to get to the playoffs. He knows how to win in the playoffs. He knows how to add Super Bowl rings. He might be able to help this young team get over the hump and find a way to win in the clutch. Huge expectations in L.A. You got the Chargers and the defending champion Rams in the same building as well. For the Chargers specifically, what would you say was the most questionable move of the offseason so far? Well, I would say most questionable was they didn't draft a specific offensive tackle to play right the right side because they addressed it at guard with Zion Johnson with their first round pick. He's plug and play. He's going to go right in there. But the right tackle spot is still a Storm Norton, Trey Pipkins competition at the moment. Although I do think that they had a guy that they picked later in the draft, Jamari Sawyer from Georgia, who's a combo guard tackle, who may get into that competition later. Chris, last year, that offensive line was, if you wanted something done, you went to the left side. Okay? Rashawn Slater was an all-pro as a rookie. Right? Matt Filer at left guard was tremendous. The center, Corey Lindsley. The right side was where they had the struggles with Michael Schofield at guard and Storm Norton at tackle. They had to get better there. They addressed it with Johnson. I want to see if they end up with the right tackle competition there that gives them what they're looking for. And speaking of Johnson, why do you think the number 17 overall pick is going to make the biggest impact his rookie season for the Chargers? Chrissy, because this is a kid who has bet on himself throughout time. Think about where he started. He began his college career at Davidson, which is one double A or football championship subdivision, which doesn't sound so bad. But Davidson also plays in a conference where it is a non-scholarship one double A. He developed, made the jump to Boston College, and has played every offensive line position. We saw that at the Senior Bowl. Center, guard, tackle. Kid keeps getting better and better. I think he's a plug and play at guard. That's exactly where I think is his best spot. He comes right in with the expectation of being that guy. And by the way, where do quarterbacks hate pressure? We know that they hate it off the edge. That's normal. But that gut pressure inside, in their face where they can't step up and throw it, that's what they're looking to eliminate. He helps take the pressure off of Justin Herbert, allows him to throw those beautiful passes downfield even more. From non-scholarship to a first-round pick and likely a first-year starter in the NFL for Brandon Staley, who got a lot of heat last season for those failed fourth down conversion attempts. Do you think he sticks to the analytics or dials it back a bit after potentially missing the postseason because of some of those calls? You know, Chris, I think he sticks with the analytics more times than not. This is a young, young, young coach who has come up through the ranks, who has analyzed all this stuff we're talking about and has conviction in it. He believes in it. He stuck to his guns all the way through, even when the rest of us were throwing things at the television and going, not now. And that Raiders game was the biggest one. Week 18, where he went for it deep in his own territory. It doesn't turn out. But he has great conviction in it. He's confident that over time, those numbers will turn, especially as his team continues to get better. I think he's got a chance to be one of the best coaches in the NFL, but we can't anoint him that now. Things didn't turn out the way they were supposed to in a couple of those calls that you noted. They missed the playoffs with an opportunity to get there. But I think there are a lot of playoffs coming up for Brandon Staley. Remember, he was a college quarterback who became a defensive guru 
because when we went to Northern Illinois, Joe Novak, the head coach there, said, I like quarterbacks to run my scout team on defense. And that's how he started the process. I think a lot of coaches are going to start thinking more about not just being specialists on one side or the other, but getting a nice smattering of all positions in order to help them become head coaches. I'm a big believer in Brandon Staley. No team had more fourth down conversions than the Chargers, but uh, with fans, you, you remember the ones that did not work out. Let's talk Justin Herbert, who so far has worked out as good as they could have hoped. Now, and remember last year this time, a lot of people were calling for a, a sophomore slump because he was so good winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. Did not take a step back at all. What's in store for his third season? He takes another step forward, Chris. Look, people looked at Justin Herbert, and I think the vast majority of us, and I include all of us in that that are the media members, evaluators, the whole deal. You remember all that conversation about does he have the presence to take over a huddle? Is he that guy step forward for leadership? The way kids are coming out of college nowadays, we're not asking him to be that vocal rah-rah quarterback that we remember in movies. We're asking him to be more executors, a lot of plays coming in from the sideline. But what we missed was the steal and the resolve in this young man. Remember, he's got a brother who's in med school, and his brother was a 4.0 student, and he chased him the entire time. By the way, Justin became a 4.0 student and won the Campbell Trophy by the National Football Foundation, the academic Heisman. He loves football. He's crazy about it. He's in the film room all the time. It burns him when he doesn't win ball games. And then you take the fact that they got better on offense, drafted Isaiah Spiller at running back. They added Zion Johnson on the offensive line. But I think the big thing is they got better on defense. All those defensive tackles in free agency. Drafted Otito Obonia from uh, UCLA as a defensive tackle. Drafted JT Woods on the back end. Signed JC Jackson as a corner. Getting better on defense is paramount for them to take the next jump. And that'll make Justin Herbert better as well. 12-1 to 1 to win the MVP, fifth best odds of anybody, but it's all about the wins and the team. The over-under is 10. How many wins do you see the Chargers getting this season? I'm adding one to that. I'm going 11-6 and six with this ball club. And again, this AFC West, as you described it, is a beast, which means I got to get into workout and get myself going, get into the weight room and start working out too if I'm going to cover this AFC West because – Every team in there feels like they're capable of getting it done because of who they have at quarterback. As someone described to me recently, a former, gen former general manager in the NFL, they have four of the top 15 quarterbacks in the NFL, three of the top 10, and that order can change on a given weekend. That's how good these guys are. But I think they get to 11, and I think that they push and contend hard for the AFC West crowd. Okay, you told us you like the Chiefs to win 12 games and win that division, the Chargers to win 11. What can they accomplish in the postseason? Wild card team and scaring the heck out of everyone because if that defense starts to gel, Chris, remember, you're not talking about just shutting people down nowadays. All you're trying to do is take possessions. If you have people with empty possessions or force them to kick field goals with Justin Herbert at quarterback, you feel pretty good about what you what you have in front of you. So they could be the worst match for any team out there when they get to the playoffs. Plus, Brandon Staley, and he's always pushing it, going forward on fourth down and doing those things. They have the style and the hubris to be the type of team you don't want to play in the playoffs. And I think for them, if they improve defensively, that can take them where they want to go in 2022. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.